Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Now previously on Row Along, I went to the ChatGPT thing and asked it to create me a training plan as a primer to get me back into performance rowing. And today is the fifth session of that plan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do four eight minute intervals with four minutes rest in between. And those four minute rests are important, okay? Because you have to earn them. And what that means is that the intensity is gonna be up there. If you feel that these four minutes rests are too long, you haven't done the main workout, like the work section of your interval hard enough, okay? So what that means then from an intensity point of view is that the intensity is up there. From a kind of F out of 10, you're probably gonna be starting off at eight out of 10 and probably by the end of the workout, you're gonna be up at 10 out of 10. Um, if a 2K pace guide is more your kind of thing, then you're probably looking around about 2K plus five, maybe even a little bit faster. If you wanna look at the sessions we've done so far, then if you compare it to the six times four minutes, then you're probably gonna go like one or two seconds slower than you did that. But again, make sure and don't ease off keep that intensity up there and if you're using heart rate zones then you're going to be at that kind of anaerobic threshold or actually into the anaerobic by the end of the workout all right so hopefully that gives you enough of an idea but basically the intensity is going to be up there all right so let's get ourselves into our four minute warm-up as we always do and get our machine set up now on the concept two which is how i'm going to describe it you have to get to the uh, drag factor first and set that to where you want it to be okay if you don't have a drag factor then please set it between kind of four and five because too low isn't the problem too high is where it becomes a problem if you're not on the concept two, just set your resistance, you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get it moving. Next up, if you can, adjust your monitor so it's at eye height, so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, if you can adjust the foot stretcher height to get them to the point where you're able to come to the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position, okay? If you're set too high, you can get a little bit bound up and everything's a little bit tight. If you're set too low, it can be uh, too easy to go scooting straight past. And what happens then is your backside goes out from underneath you and you lose power. Right, let's see how this goes. So four minute warm up, they run about 20 strokes uh, per minute. Sorry, I've lost my words there. Four minute warm up, <laughs> 20 strokes per minute. Um, and just start off at a nice gentle pace and we'll build up over two minutes. Then we'll do some single leg drills and whatever to get yourself nice and warm. Here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. So start off nice and gentle, just kind of push with the feet, connect to the hands, get the body moving, give everything a chance to kind of say, oh, we're working now, okay. And of course, although I'm saying we're gonna do two minutes and then we'll go into the single leg drills and stuff that I normally do, if you wanna just do four minutes straight as a warm up to prep for today's session, to make sure you are nice and warm, then please do. You could always do the single leg drills and stuff as the cool down at the end. So I wanna make sure you're warm enough to be able to hit the intensity high from the start today. Now I'm going to do mine at round about 26 strokes a minute to hit that 2k plus 5 pace but you don't have to match me for stroke rate if you don't want but of course you can just follow along match my stroke rate just watch me on screen and then just drive when I drive and recover when I recover which is hopefully what you're doing right now in today's warm-up. So continue pushing with the feet, get that connection so that the hands, you feel them kind of bracing against the handle as it connects to the flywheel or water wheel at the same time that you push with your feet. And that's how the power comes in. I'll talk a little bit about technique in the first of today's intervals. And then who knows what I'll talk about. <laughs> right, two more strokes here. One more, and then let's put one foot on the ground for those wanting to do the drill section of these warm-ups. Now, if you are new to row along, I do talk a lot through the workout. So if you're not really looking for someone talking away at you, feel free to mute me, put on some music and then just watch me for stroke rhythm and stuff. Let's change legs. And then maybe when it comes to the rest intervals, 
you can possibly bring me back up again see if I'm seeing anything interesting highly unlikely <laughs> but I'll talk a little bit technique a little bit motivation and then I'll just try and just talk stuff just to keep you interested entertained, motivated, whatever throughout the workout too let's put both feet back in and then legs straight roll with your back and arms so that means swing with your back and then pull in your arms swing, pull so you take that initial tension of the flywheel with your back swing first and then pull in your arm arms maybe, maybe let's not be let's not judge if you've only got one arm then well done for rowing right let's get to the front of the machine arm straight forwards tilt press out at the front so hold that forwards tilt hold those arms nice and straight and just press out and get used to that feeling here of the power coming from your legs first into the handle so you can then add in your backswing an arm pull rather than wasting it at the start one more here Whoa. and I'll explain what's going on with my elbow in the main workout but for the time being keep on moving up and down the rail have a quick drink of course continue to warm up you'll see the timer at the top which will let you know how long it is until the start of our main session Okay then, so just a quick reminder, today's workout is four eight minute intervals with four minutes rest in between. And remember, it's important to keep the intensity high in these intervals, okay? The point is, you're not working absolute maximum from the start because then you'll get four minutes in and you'll fall over and you won't be able to complete. But you need to keep that intensity up from the start, okay? You need to get to a point at the end of each interval where you're like, I really need these four minutes rest and all of the four minutes rest in order to recover for the next one. If you're just phoning this one in, it's not quite the point of this plan the point of this plan is to really kind of return you into performance rowing and so you have to put the work into this but i'll talk a bit more about this in the row what's the point of me talking now i can be talking while we're rowing oh don't waste your words john <laughs> so like i say run right about 26 strokes a minute for me if you want to follow me but row at whatever intensity and stroke rate you need to in order to be able to get through all four of these intervals you ready for this then here we go in three two one and we're off so it might take three, four strokes for you to get up to your pace and rhythm in terms of stroke rate and then the pace that you see on screen on whatever rowing machine you're using. But hopefully by now you've found it and then it's just a case of powering along at this pace for the whole workout and trying not to need to ease off if fatigue sets in because like I said right before we started this the point of this performance plan is to sharpen you up to get that idea of performance back it can be really easy to find a comfort zone to just sit around, hang around in and yeah you're getting a good workout it's not doing anything bad for you you can feel you're getting fitter possibly stronger and losing weight and stuff but maybe you've just lost that edge that you once had maybe you used to be a 2k warrior racing every weekend or once a week on row pro or something and then for whatever reason you've fallen away from it well that's what this plan is designed around about exposing you to that training intensity again so that you can come back into racing again like on the 
actual AI generated plan this was 4 times 2k with 4 minutes rest in between so it really is tailored for those wanting to get back into 2k racing but of course because of how these roll-alongs work I change duration stuff oh sorry <laughs> what am I saying I change distance rows into time duration so that we'll still stop and start together all right so we are 30 seconds away from halfway through this first interval and hopefully if you weren't <laughs> warmed up before you really should be by now Whew. so that's us at the halfway point of interval one so just have an overview of your technique think about your posture first I know I never start with posture you want to be powerful primed as you go through the stroke you don't want to feel slumped and weak so as you hit both ends of the stroke really do think about your posture as you come forwards you're up on your sit bones hips tilted forwards or at least not tilted backwards and then at the back of the stroke you want to make sure your core is braced against the power of your finish and then as you travel from front to back to front to back you just want to be pivoting forwards and backwards over your hips you're not rounding your upper or lower back and then the real key things are that as you come forwards you have straight arms and a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine okay so you're tilting over your hips not leaning from upper or lower back with your arms straight and then you hold that position as you push your feet into the machine so push and this is where it can start to fall apart for some people usually either by pulling too early from the front or swinging their back 
too early from the front or worse both <laughs> but really try and think about power from the legs first surging through your body with straight arms and a forward tilt ok 10 seconds to go two more one more there you go well, that was a oh, actually I feel about 8 minutes went past nice and quick Whew, hang on let me take Ooh, cramping up here on my bicep so if I have a drink then I'll talk about it remember you should feel relieved to have hit this 4 minute rest not only to help you recover from the interval that we've just done which hopefully by like two minutes gone that should be the case but also to prep you for the interval that's to come so two minutes to recover two minutes to make sure that you are kind of refreshed ready to go into the next one so hopefully that's the case with you hopefully it means you gauge your intensity right so basically I was doing weights and I've got a weird thing with my elbow where I think it's almost like the ulnar nerve that runs down is in the wrong place instead of going through like the groove uh, of the bone or in between tendons or whatever it's almost like it's actually kind of sitting out and so as I'm doing weights if I'm doing bicep curls here you are uh, I can see the kind of the bone in my elbow right there it kind of clicks out of place and it's obviously or whether the ulnar nerve is where it's supposed to be and it's just that clicking that happens something when I'm doing various kind of some different kind of moves is really irritating my ulnar nerve uh, so that's what this restraint thing is for but unfortunately it's so tight it's it's like rowing with um uh the um what was it called blood flow restriction cuffs so i'm rowing one of them on because it's suddenly my down here is like just feels absolutely solid from from rowing with it on however at least i can row i tried doing i tried making this video i know this is all about me i'm sorry i'm sorry but i'm hoping you're enjoying this just while you get a chance to recover uh yesterday i tried to make this row and I got about a minute and a half, two minutes into the, uh, in, just into the warm up, and I just it felt as though it was, um, like you know if you've got a really old rubber band, and you stretch it and you see that the rubber is like kind of all petrified and split in between. That's almost what it felt like when my muscle and tendon kind of running down there. It just felt wrong, so I thought, oh dear, let's not row today. So that's why I'm rowing today, today, <laughs> uh, with my elbow sleeve thing on made of bamboo like it matters uh, but it's comfortable it's nice and tight and that's all that matters and it feels okay I might have to keep on slipping that off in between the, the elbow cuff you God, get your mind out of the gutter um, yeah in between just because it's a little bit weird but it does feel as though at least it's holding whatever's clicking as I'm moving it feels like it's why I can feel it clicking uh, at least it's not hurting that's the most important part at least this way I can get to the end of the fifth session so this is the end of the first week of the AI training plan and then I might even just suggest that if you don't see a new one coming up within the next few days just repeat this these five sessions again but hopefully you'll be able to increase your intensity by one or two seconds uh, on these kind of high intensity ones but I'll talk to you about that a bit more in a second because we're about to hit interval two right we're starting in 10 seconds time Gonna go right back up to the same pace, same stroke rate you were before, okay? In five, four, three, two, one, go. This is, I mean, I talk, I do talk a lot about technique, okay? And it's not just that it gives me something to talk about, but it also is really important from an injury and comfort point of view 
because I think the reason my elbow went a little bit twangy in the warm-up yesterday is because I came to it completely cold and maybe my drag factor is still a little bit too high up at 140 for the fact I've got an injured elbow whereas now that I'm warm and I kind of put this restraint on and stuff this is a lot more comfortable and because I'm letting that power flow through my body through straight arms at the front and not fighting the weight of the machine by pulling early I'm still able to row and it's kind of one of the things that is so great well to me, for me anyway about rowing is it usually unless it's something quite severe or somehow rowing generated even if I've got like a calf tweak because I've been running too much or well I know like one of my hips feels a little bit weird from doing shuttle runs oh so rates come down hang on I can still climb on the erg and put out a good session whether that's a low rate low intensity row or still able to be more intense but the reason is because although I don't have a perfect technique I think I've got a relatively safe technique I don't jerk around the machine I'm not overpowering any element of my body movement I'm letting everything flow from the leg drive all the way through to the pulling in of the handle and then the return and I really like I say put my comfort when rowing not the same as a comfort zone <laughs> down to that smooth flow through the stages so really do think about rowing almost like a, a dance it's a flow that starts from the drive pushing with the legs then adding in the backswing and then finally finishing with the arms and the arms are weird in that your brace hanging off the handle from the start so it's still your hands that are putting the power ultimately into the machine but for 80% of the drive they're just a conduit for the power from your legs and your back and really the back of the stroke is just a a good strong finish you're not whipping it to a finish like you were starting a 
lawnmower. It's almost like the tension you feel as you start the stroke, as you run out of leg and back power, you just add in arms to complete and continue that force. So, although there are people putting me that will say that you push from the front, you don't pull, it is important to realize if you want to finish strong with the arms, but not, like I say, like you're trying to pull start a lawnmower. And then the finish is about rhythm too. So you pull the handle into around sternum height and then instantly let the handle just float away from your body at the same pace you brought it in at. And what that should do is get your arms straight nice and quickly and also trigger the forwards tilt back over your hips so that by the time your hands pass your knees you're in that forwards tilt and you don't have to do anything more to your back and then just bend your knees to slide effortlessly to the front of the machine ready for the next stroke last one here so I've done it again where I just zone out and just talk almost like on a another plane because I know it's all getting a little bit tough and so it's harder to talk <laughs> oh right let's ease this off again I had to make a choice when buying this not to buy a green one Oh, I hope you just had a drink too, because, well, maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, but this is all a green screen. In fact, if I can remember, I'll probably forget, but there you go. So that's what it actually looks like. I'm back into it again. Hopefully I remember to do that part in the edit. Apologies if I forget. Um, yeah, so it's all the green screen, so... Um, if I have anything green, in fact, I think even the yellow Under Armour sign on, like logo on the side of my shorts, I think that even gets keyed out. So it's like, it's really, the keyer that I use is very powerful for anything that's green, it just goes. And so I was looking for armor strengths and I did see one that was like a nice green color. And I suddenly thought, if I do that, it'll be that I get like forearm and then nothing. And then I'll have an upper arm again and you'll be like, oh no, what's happened to John? You wouldn't. You'd obviously think the idiot's gone and done some strange green screen thing, but yeah, so. Whew, sorry. So, you should be feeling the same as I am, okay? You should be feeling wabbit after that second, second interval where you put a lot into that. And so you're now like, whoa. But we are at the Bon Jovi point, okay? So we are halfway there. I've only got two more of these to go. And like I say, if you, I mean, my, my 
red little silicon wristband thing here, which I do sometimes send out to some people when they buy stuff. Um, it says, I alone chose power. Okay, it also says nothing beats me, but that's a bit... Pfft. But the whole point is, is that the I alone chose power thing um, is really true. Especially when you're doing some kind of like a, just a remote, like this kind of thing, the roll along thing, where you're on your own, there's nobody sitting next to you. There's no one like, well, there might be someone next to you. Maybe you're doing this with like side by side with someone, you never know. But I'm not there with you to hold you accountable, okay? I'm not there to say, come on, come on, get the pace up, don't ease off. Um, so eventually what it comes down to is when that point comes where you start to feel, well, this is getting quite a lot, um, do you think to yourself, you think, I am choosing to do this. I chose, I alone chose power, like my wristband says, that um, it, this is something that you've decided to do, that you want, you're doing this performance primer plan because you want to just zing yourself up uh, into an, an, the next level in order to be able to perform and race or, or just if you're doing the CTC or something, or you just want to improve your speed or whatever, and you've just been on that comfort zone, which is where I've been from a rowing performance point of view for ages. So you've made the choice to do this. And so the only person that you are making excuses to by slowing down is yourself. Okay, you're letting yourself down. You've let yourself down. <laughs> uh, 15 seconds to go. So that's my point here, is that you want to hold it. Even when it gets tough here, keep on going, okay? So 10 seconds to go. Hopefully it won't get so tough that you start to have, but maybe we should then be going faster. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one, go. So after all, this is where the last session was about just endurance, okay? It was like 35 minutes, 20 strokes a minute. It was just about rowing at a low intensity to build your fitness and your blood system. But apart from the duration, there shouldn't have been anything taxing about that 35 minute row. Whereas this one is about performance endurance, or sorry, performance endurance. <laughs> Get my intonation right. The last one was just endurance, but this one is performance endurance. So this is about holding a high intensity through that point of, you kind of come out the other end of the comfort zone into, well, discomfort. And you need to embrace this point of discomfort. Understand that it is manageable. You're not at max intensity, totally anaerobic, where you eventually do have to slow down. Usually, for a row like this. Physically, you're capable, but it's the mental side where you have to start building. And that's what I mean by embracing the discomfort where it's like you tell your body that or your brain that you understand that it's starting to get up there intensity wise but you know you've got it that it's only a few minutes and then you get a rest And this idea of exposing yourself to this discomfort is really where your race performance comes from. You can build fitness, you can build pace, power, speed, but what you then have to work on 
is mental fitness to put the two of them together. And there is a huge element that comes into play here of why you're doing it. What is your why? What's the reason you want to get your performance back? Is it uh, disappointment in recent performance? Is it about a return after injury or like me I've been training for high rocks for so long which although there is a rowing element in high rocks it's not actually a performance element in high rocks you really just need to hold a good average pace without exhausting yourself for the rest of the race to come so I haven't really been training for any high-end fitness or sorry high-end performance speed for the past six months but I have been trying to do um what's the phrase I'm trying to row when tired so I'll run a 5k and then I would just try and row a 1k without exhausting myself and then I'd run another 5k and so that was usually just 20 strokes a minute at just a little faster like 5 seconds faster than low intensity pace so I've been nowhere near fast stuff and so that's why I wanted to create this performance primer plan and importantly kind of factor it around different people's returning levels which is why I'm not really pushing the 2k pacing idea I'm just saying roll to whatever intensity or maybe heart rate you think is right so that we can all build back up we can investigate what our bodies are capable of as we go through the two weeks and especially sessions one three and five which are about performance and hopefully you're going a little faster Ooh, that's one or feeling better on each one oh. can I do the next one in silence please although it's a good chance uh, you're at home 
saying to me, please do the next one in silence. But yeah, so my, let's have a drink, hang on. Stop talking. Oh, my why is about almost remembering what it feels like to hit these performance endurance intervals. It may take me longer than the two weeks that I have planned out for this. Maybe I want to go up to four and really examine and like, I know, I like dive into it. Like I used to, as a cyclist, I used to talk about how I would eat hills. I think I've said this before. I would get to a hill and people that I were out with, sorry, people that I was out with would be all like, oh man, there's a hill quite near me called the Crow Road. Not the book. Uh, it kind of goes up into the camp season. It's like a long, steady climb. Quite steep, it takes you up into the camps. I know loads of people that when they come to the bottom of that, they're like, oh man, we've got this one to do now. Um, whereas I get to the bottom of that, or I did on my cycling days, and I'd be like, yeah, here we go, let's bring it on, let's go, let's, let's really eat into this hill and kind of get it done. And that's what I want to get back to from a rowing point of view, is looking at intervals like this and going, yeah, how much, how, how much harder can I hit it in the next time I do it versus... Um, the time I've done it before. So if you are going to do this over a couple of weeks, then do compare your sessions. Compare session one to session one and three to three and five to five and see if you've been able to go a little bit faster. And it might well be that uh, you can do session one um, uh, a lot faster. Session three is not quite as much faster, but still a little bit in five. And then you do it again and you can, then it all shifts again. So uh, and maybe that is a reward enough for you that you can go through a plan like this and you can see how your body responds. Because it's not, listen, this isn't brain surgery. This is not uh, rocket science. This is about training yourself, training your body first to be able to go faster and to be fitter, and then training your brain. And then as long as you can kind of hold it together and you've got the desire, you, you know what your why is, what's your why, why are you doing this? then you can break through these barriers that your brain sets in front of you. And I talk about like these lines that you get. You get like the line of just getting off the couch. Then you get the line of, right, I'm gonna do some harder work today. Then you're gonna go, oh, I'm really going for it. And then there's that last line that's about performance that you need to take yourself into a point where, like I say, it's discomfort. And that's where performance comes from, is when you break that line into discomfort. So you can stay under the line and you can still be fit, you can still be powerful, you can still be perfectly fine. But if you have that desire for performance, then I really do truly believe that there's that, that line that you need to cross in order to take yourself into a point. Like you see folks after a 2K who are like lying on the ground unable to move because they put absolutely everything into it. It's not really an affectation. I think it's a lot of times they just don't need to fall on the ground and it's like, oh, this is what people do. But I fall on the ground because I just can't face sitting on the rowing machine and I, and I want to lie down. Oh, anyway, 15 seconds to go. So that's my point. That's what this kind of a plan is is about a bit late to be telling you that isn't it <laughs> okay so six five four three two one let's go so this is our final one and hopefully you're holding stroke rate and pace for the entirety of these intervals okay which is what i'm hoping and that as you get to the end of each interval, you're kind of right on the red line, right on your limit. Or it could well be that interval one, you manage to get to the end at the same pace. Interval two, maybe with 30 seconds to go, you were just ragged and just couldn't hold it. Interval three, maybe it was same again. And then hopefully this one, because it's the last interval and you know that apart from a two minute cool down and some stretching, you're gonna be done. You're not thinking I've got another 
interval to do. So with any luck, you can just keep going through that last 30 if you've been kind of slowing down before. Or the last subset are the people who haven't quite been given it the level of intensity that they possibly could have. Maybe because you weren't sure how to pace this one. Maybe you were easing off. But what I want you to do is as we hit four minutes to go in a little over 90 seconds, I want you to increase your pace. Go one or two seconds faster. And then with three minutes to go, if you still don't think you're at a eight or nine out of 10, go faster again. And the same for two and one minute to go. Just to make sure you find the pace that you should have been rowing this at so that then next time it comes round you get into pace Whew. nice and fast and you don't spend three and a half intervals trying to get there <laughs> so you folks I want you to go faster after this stroke. The rest of us, well, we've been nice and honest from the start. That's honest with ourselves. Well, ideally, what you want is to find a coach or a plan or even a intensity that you don't question. When I was with my last coach, I knew my time with him was at a close when he'd give me sessions to do and instead of just saying okay boss I'd question it I'd be like oh don't know if I want to do that or questioning the pace guide or whatever and the moment you get into a habit of questioning what you're being asked to do it's time to step away whether that's just for a few sessions until you realise how accurate it actually was or permanently and so it goes the same for my stuff if you start to question and disagree with what I'm saying then I suggest two things 
one if I'm talking about 2k paces a 2k plus 5 and you think that's too intense do another 2k time trial because there's probably a good chance your 2k time has slipped same if you think it's soft do another time trial and it could be your 2k time is actually better than you think maybe you're working off a 1.55 average and then you row a 2k with a 150 average that's a huge difference but then you're still not happy just do your own thing for a while or adjust the pace guide to what you want and carry on doing my sessions two more <laughs> oh. <sighs> sorry oh you know I'll maybe cut this a little bit oh there's a prime example of when my brain shuts down then my mouth keeps on going because actually that was quite a negative finish towards my own <laughs> my own teachings saying to you that if you don't agree then don't do them it's not which isn't quite the point i was trying to make but i suppose it is i mean i stopped doing sam stuff because i started to just kind of go ah uh, but i think it was more i'd lost my ability to hold the pace that he was suggesting to me but i was telling myself i was still a 640 2k guy when i think i was closer to 655 and so that's why i was questioning how tough the sessions were so but it's important that you find that out for yourself that you discover that kind of thing out for yourself rather than uh yeah suffer or or yeah whatever so sorry let's get into a two minute cool down sorry so we're just gonna do this at a nice gentle intensity let yourself ease off so maybe that 2k plus maybe that kind of warm up how you finish the warm up and then just ease off pace so here we go in three two one let's go oh and usually what you find when people are questioning a pace guide now this is a stark truth what you find is that the slow low intensity sessions so say at 5 out of 10 or if you're working off a 2k pace guide then say it was an 18 strokes a minute at 2k plus 20 what you find is that people who are who have just kind of disengaged with their coach won't listen to being told keep that pace down nice and slow and they start to do that 2k plus 20 at like 2k plus 16 or 17 because they can okay low intensity rowing there's a lot of headroom to be able to push in more power and then take it away from low intensity but then the problem is not only is that damaging in terms of building your core fitness and things but then they'll do the opposite for the high end stuff so when say it's uh, 8 times 2 minutes or 2 minutes rest at 2k pace people will be like well that sounds a bit tough I'm going to do it at 2k plus 2 and so they slow down on the, the top end stuff so they go too fast on the low intensity stuff and too slow on the high intensity stuff and they're stuck in this kind of black hole of non-improvement and that is the most destructive thing that can happen to you as a rower when it comes to your performance because you're no longer building fitness and you're no longer building speed you're just meh okay so the, 
when it comes to any coaching plan, that's what I want you to take away from today's session, okay? Oh, right. That's the cool down done. Would you like to join me for some stretching? You can either join Stretchy John, he will take you through guided stretching if you have space for a stretching mat, or you can follow me and I will take you through it in and around the rowing machine. So put your feet back into the straps, a little bit loose in the straps, uh, and then put your hands in the air and fold forwards. And as long as you've got your, your backside kind of um, in a comfortable position, let's say, on the seat, so it's not like scooting out from underneath you, as you fold forwards, you should find that you get that nice stretch into your hamstrings, okay? If you don't get the stretch into your hamstrings, chances are there's something going wrong with your knees or you haven't done that fold forwards properly or maybe curling from your lower back or your upper back. Um, do resist the urge or the tendency to grab your ankles and pull yourself forwards or grab your toes and pull yourself forwards, especially on a rowing machine because there is a slight downwards angle anyway, this should work for you, okay? Because you're up on the seat and your feet are down, as you fold forwards, that should stretch your hamstrings. If it doesn't, oh, I'll we'll change the legs. If it doesn't, then there's something wrong with your ankles. Right, let's do uh, glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your ankle is in the crook of your knee. Bring that knee across your body. So your face, knee, foot, foot are all in one line. Hold in position with one arm and then rotate round into your, down into that glute. Now, you don't have to hold on to the back of the machine, ta-da. Um, if you don't want to. Uh, I do just from a stability point of view sometimes, if I'm feeling a little bit wobbly, <laughs> for, for want of a better phrase. Um, yeah, and then just kind of, just feel that stretch radiate out through your glutes. Oh. And let's change legs, same thing. Hold in position and then rotate round. And that rotation is really, I mean, you could probably, just by bringing your knee up and across your body, you might already feel a good enough stretch. You might not need to add in that rotation. I quite like it just from a spine movement point of view and it does give a little bit more of a stretch into that glute, which your glutes do take, if you're rowing properly with a good posture, your glutes should take quite a lot of, um, will be doing quite a lot of work. Um, if you don't have a good posture, then chances are all you're doing is crushing them with your sit bones. So I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna do quads. So I'm gonna rest one finger on the monitor, flick oh, my foot, opposite foot up behind me, and hold it back up against my backside. And it just creates the tension through my quad to just stretch out. Because obviously this isn't, your, your quad wants to squash like upwards when it works. So by doing this way, you're stretch, stretching it back out again. And if you're like me, it's also giving you a good, <laughs> a good balance workout on your other foot. The one that's on the ground, right? Let's try and do this without falling over. Flick. Ooh. Oh, yay, hey. Come to the row along circus and watch a man stand on one leg. <laughs> yeah, it's getting better. Oh, no, no, just, just as I say that, I fall over. And I've not fallen over yet, almost, almost done it. But yeah, when I did this on day one of this plan, having not stretched for ages, this was tough. Though I think I was still in shoes on day one, wasn't I? Which would be even worse. Oh, right, oh, I've got sweat running on my eyes. So let's get down next to the machine. I've got one foot in front of me with my knee above the ankle. The other foot's behind me, still at a 90 degree angle. I put my toes on the ground and my heel up um, and then send your body forwards to kind of lean into that front leg or at least to kind of sharp, to lean forwards on that front leg. But actually the force, the pressure from leaning forwards goes into your back leg, and this is what stretches your hip flexor, okay? So this shouldn't really feel like you're going into a lunge on your front leg. Yes, there's an element of support here, but because you've got a good posture, um, everything should be uh, centrally weighted, and there, therefore, as you're opening up this back leg, that should get a nice stretch, okay? If you're suddenly starting to feel that this front leg is shaking from the force that you're putting into it, then chances are, I'm just changing legs, chances are that what you're doing is that you're leaning forwards and put, putting all the weight over your knee like this, okay? And I'm getting absolutely nothing into my uh, hip flexor right now by doing this because all my weight's coming forwards. Whereas if I have, if I straighten myself up into a good or better posture, let's say, and do the same thing, shift the weight forwards, but I'm just pushing, my body's kind of going forwards in a good posture, opening up that back leg. Now I get a really nice stretch into this hip flexor. 
Uh, so do pay attention to that. And do remember, Jeff Cavalier has a great video about whether you need to stretch your hip flexors or not, so do check that one out. Right, uh, shoulders next, hand out straight in front of you, bring it across your body, and use your other arm, loop it across, or loop. What would you call that? Hinge? No. Uh, v hold? No. Cinch? Cinch? Like pliers, what do pliers do? Pliers squeeze, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Feed your arm through your other arm and then add force back onto it. Not so much that you're popping your shoulder out of its socket, please. Swap arms. Oh, I'm just checking this. It's not doing anything to my elbow doing this. I still don't know what to do with this. I mean, obviously the simplest thing is just to not do any weights, but um, it's just where the 10th of March already, which it feels like only yesterday where I was saying, um, is it March already? And we're already at the 10th of March. Um, and my next High Rocks race is in October. So my plan was get back into performance rowing for for most of this, I'm back into that kind of game again. Add in some weights and things, um, get stronger, fitter, fitter, faster, stronger, ready for my race. Uh, when we do, oh, do forearms next, sorry. Uh, so push your hands in front of your face, bring them down in front of your body. Keep on pushing your hands together here and you should find you get a nice stretch under your, uh, like in your forearms, underneath your forearms and wrists and things. Wrists leading out to forearms, let's say. And your fingers will get a nice stretch in this as well. But yeah, so my point was to do like rowing and weights and whatever to get really into tip-top performance ready for my next race in October, like seven months away for High Rocks. Um, like roll everything together and get back into, hey, I'm a machine. But this elbow's kind of got in the way. And I also need to, uh, um, in fact, actually, let's, let's change forearms before I go to the next subject, <laughs> on the next rant. So I'm gonna do biceps next. So with an okay posture again, sitting on your seat, put your hands behind you as though you're flying, Whee! and then rotate your thumbs outwards, and that will lengthen the long head of your bicep. So uh, I'm gonna make a, one of my little YouTube short things, but just as a little teaser for you, just to say that's what I'm gonna make. Um, so the past two weeks, I've been back to eating breakfast. I've been having a, a bowl of gluten-free rolled oats and milk in the morning as breakfast for the first time. First time I've had breakfast in like three years. Um, or during the week anyway. Um, and although I feel I've got be better energy during the day, I think, I feel rubbish. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I feel awful. Right, uh, triceps next. One hand in the air, put it down into your spine, and then, uh, yeah, help it back with your other hand. In fact, I'll probably record this wee YouTube short right after doing this, so you'll go, oh, look, he's same sweaty, he's things like the same. But yeah, from eating, um, uh, breakfast, the oats and the milk. I feel terrible. I just feel bloated. I feel as though I've, uh, I, I just feel as though I'm putting on loads of weight. I've definitely gone up quite a lot of fat, gone down a little bit of muscle, possibly because I'm not doing weights and things. Um, weight, actual weight has gone down by about half a kilogram, but I think that's because of muscle loss, um, which is a bit strange. But yeah, anyway, anyway. But I think it's lactose. I'm swapping arms. I don't think it's the breakfast concept. I think I have a problem with lactose. Um, whether I'm lactose intolerant, I don't know, but I'd certainly, like if I go out and I have a latte, um, then I definitely get very bloated um, afterwards. So I think I've got a problem with milk. So I'm gonna change my breakfast, rather than stopping eating breakfast, I'm gonna change my breakfast, but I need to try and find some kind of protein that I can put in. So I'm thinking egg on toast. Could you just let me know if that's okay? <laughs> anyway, right, we're done on the stretching. So there we go, uh, that's it all done, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was a, a good row, I think. Maybe, like I said, towards the end of the fourth interval when I was talking about training plans and coaches or whatever, my brain, like I said, my brain disengaged but my mouth kept on going because I was just exhausted at that point, just trying to hold on to get to the end of the, I was trying to be a brave boy to get to the end of those, uh, that last eight minutes without kind of just easing off and going, oh, but made it to the end. So hopefully you did too. Hopefully you hit that right intensity level. So the plan as it stands is to do basically exactly what we've done in these first five sessions um, and just do them again into week two. Now the uh, endurance ones that were 30 minutes and 35 minutes, ideally they're gonna go up to 40 and 45 minutes for week two, but like I say, there may be a little bit of a pause depending on how my elbow is, whether I'm gonna record the next ones or not. So if you, have, if you don't see in the playlist uh, session six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever. Um, check the date of this one. So obviously, if you don't see it like within five minutes, obviously it's because I've not recorded it yet. But if it's been like, if you check the date and it's been three days, four days, and you haven't seen a new one, chances are I'm taking a little bit of a rest just to heal, let my elbow heal. In which case, just repeat week one again, okay? Um, and hopefully, all will be good. <laughs>
Yes. All right. In the meantime, it's a Friday for me. Hopefully this will get up tonight and it'll still be a Friday for you when you see this. Um, if not, but then it doesn't matter. You could be rolling this on Tuesday. Who cares? But that means that I am all excited because I get my spaghetti bolognese, which I'm really looking forward to. So uh, the last thing is hashtag, let's just uh, uh, have elbow, okay? Because I've got my, and that way I can feel your, feel your support, just like my big orange support here for my poor wee elbow. But... You know what, it's kind of, it's the downside to not being 18 anymore, is that just it doesn't take much for something in, in my body to go, I didn't like that, I'm not going to hurt for four weeks, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, thank you so much for doing this and putting up with me, I will see you in the next video, until the next one, take care, be well, bye-bye.